President Trump insists the FBI has no restrictions, no constraints, to use his words, free reign in this new investigation of Supreme Court nominee Brett Kavanaugh. And now, this is just into CNN. We're learning that Christine Blasey Ford and Brett Kavanaugh's names are not on the initial list of names given by Senate Republicans to the White House as suggested witnesses for the FBI to interview. We do have confirmation, however, that FBI agents spoke today with Deborah Ramirez. She is the woman who claims Kavanaugh exposed himself to her at a college-age party. It's a claim that Kavanaugh strongly denies. A source close to the FBI investigation says Ramirez today gave agents the names of other witnesses. Now, as for whether the FBI really has, quote, free reign, at least two sources close to the investigation say, hold on, that's not exactly the case. CNN is being told today that the White House is working closely with Senate Republicans to steer the FBI investigation and keep its scope as narrow as possible. Here is how we are told this is happening. Judge Kavanaugh's overall drinking history not being looked at. The FBI is getting orders only from the White House. Agents will make no conclusions about what they hear from witnesses. And then White House officials will decide how to proceed. Even if the president's top counselor is saying that the FBI investigation, which is now in its third day, is not wide open and has a well-defined mission. Listen. It will be limited in scope. It's meant to last one week, I believe beginning last Friday. And it will, it's not meant to be a fishing expedition. The White House <clears throat> is not getting involved in the FBI investigation in that way. The president very much respects the independence of the FBI and feels, as he said last night, that they should be looking at anything that they think is credible within this limited scope. Our legal and national security analyst, Asha Rangapa, is with us now. She's a former FBI agent and also here with us, White House correspondent Boris Sanchez. Asha, first, your reaction to what we're learning, that Ford and Kavanaugh apparently are not on this list of people for the FBI to interview. Yes, I find that incredibly troubling. You know, these are the two main people involved in this allegation, and they would be normally the first people that the FBI would interview to get a baseline narrative of both the accuser and the person who is refuting the allegation, get their versions uh, of, of events. Now, some people have said, well, they testified in front of the Senate Judiciary Committee, and that should be enough. And the reason that it's not enough, Anna, is that as you saw from that uh, hearing, not only did each side have particular directed questions, uh, they were cut off after five minutes, so there weren't always follow-up questions. Uh, the judge in particular did not often answer responsibly or, uh, you know, thoroughly the questions. So in an interview, what an FBI agent would do would be to go back over all of that, ask those follow-up questions, try to home in to get an answer uh, on, on what, you know, the context of the entire allegation on, on both sides. And that would actually be a baseline for then testing other witnesses' hmm. recollection yeah. of events. And according to the sources, the people who were on that list were the three other people who were named as having been at the party, according to Ford's account, and that is uh, Mark Judge, Patrick Smith, Leyland Kaiser, and then we also mentioned Deborah Ramirez from a, a different allegation that Kavanaugh is facing, but we are told from Ford's team that they have not been contacted. I'm wondering, Asha, in any investigations you did with the FBI, did anyone ever give you a deadline or limit who you could interview? No, and look, I think that the White House could definitely limit the scope of the topic to say this is limited to this allegation or these three allegations, for example. But to put a time limit and, you know, a list of witnesses especially is very micromanagey in terms of not permitting the FBI to follow up on leads. Now, if that witness list is here's the people that you can start with and if other leads come up that you need to follow to substantiate or flesh out uh, 
you know, the information, that's a different story, and I'm not sure if that's the case. But no, in a normal investigation, there wouldn't be a time limit or a limited witness list. I mean, the other thing we're being told is that this investigation is also limiting the, the part that has to do with Kavanaugh's overall drinking history, that that's not part of the investigation. Does that make sense to you? That does not make sense in this particular instance because it is relevant to the allegation here. Uh, Dr. Ford claimed that he was extremely in inebriated in, in some ways, although the judge didn't testify to this. I mean, it could also give a consistent account if he did drink so much that he couldn't recollect things. It, it would be consistent with both narratives. I mean, to, to kind of flesh that out would be important in this case to both provide a pattern of behavior and whether or not it could have been possibly true in this instance. All right, Asha, stand by. I want to bring in Boris because the president is still tweeting today that any reports that he is controlling this investigation are simply not true. Fill us in, Boris. Hey there, Anna. Yeah, President Trump just a couple days ago, as you noted, said that the FBI would have free reign over this investigation. It appears now that that statement has a couple of unstated caveats, uh, namely that the White House is going to have an influence uh, over the FBI's uh, investigation and the scope of this investigation. The president already taking aim at Democrats. He tweeted this afternoon, quote, wow, just starting to hear the Democrats who are only thinking obstruct and delay are starting to put out the word that the time and scope of FBI looking into Judge Kavanaugh and witnesses is not enough. Hello, for them, it will never be enough. Stay tuned and watch. Now, despite what the president has said about there being free reign uh, for the FBI to look over these allegations, accusations against Judge Kavanaugh, uh, keep in mind we heard from Kellyanne Conway, an advisor to the president this morning on State of the Union, who made clear the scope of this investigation is a narrow one by design. The White House does not want this to be a quote-unquote fishing expedition, Anna. All right, Boris, thank you. Asha, real quick, if you will, just a quick answer here. The president also tweeted that Actually, I want them to interview whoever they deem appropriate at their discretion, given that is an official tweet from the president. Could the FBI now say, OK, that's enough for us to now move forward in the way we deem is appropriate and interview who we want to interview? That's hard to say, Anna. The president's tweets have at times been taken as official and not official. They've contradicted things that are coming uh, elsewhere from the White House. I think it really depends on exactly who the FBI is directly dealing with in terms of reopening this investigation um, and the marching orders they're getting from that person and if they understand that person to be conveying the president's actual decisions. All right, Asha, Boris, again, thanks to both of you. Let's get reaction now from a Democratic lawmaker with us as Democratic Congressman Eric Swalwell of California. Congressman, good to have you with us. Boy, what a busy news good afternoon evening, on a Sunday. Are you confident that the FBI has enough free reign, to use the president's own words, to thoroughly investigate these accusations? Anna, I'm confident in the FBI and their ability to conduct an investigation, but uh, there are a lot of questions still. So either it's an open investigation or it's not. Other, it's an either it's an investigation that follows leads or it is constrained by a leash, or it's a credible investigation or it's not. And right now, uh, if the FBI is limited to who they can interview and where they can investigate, then it's going to leave a lot of question marks. And I think we all want to see Judge Kavanaugh either confirmed with no asterisks, no question marks, or voted down because the FBI put forward an investigation that raised serious questions and uh, we were able to put to rest all of those questions. Kellyanne Conway has said the White House is not trying to interfere with the FBI's investigation. Sarah Sanders doubled down essentially saying, quote, they're not micromanaging. Are you clear on the scope of this investigation? No, and, and press reporting says that even in, despite what the president tweeted yesterday, uh, that he has put no constraints on it, that the FBI does have constraints, that they are not interviewing the third uh, publicly named accuser, that they have not interviewed Dr. Ford, that they're not looking at uh, Judge Kavanaugh's statements about his own state of mind at the time 
or his own, uh, you know, drinking uh, habits at the time, that they're not corroborating uh, what Dr. Ford said about Mark Judge and where he worked to kind of fill in her testimony. So again, uh, if this is a limited uh, investigation capped by uh, direct directives from the president, then it won't fulfill what I think Senator Flake uh, was hoping to seek uh, when he struck that bipartisan compromise. Let's listen to what your colleague, Congressman Jerry Nadler, said this morning. We cannot have a justice on the Supreme Court uh, for the next several decades who will be deciding questions of liberty and life and death and all kinds of things for the entire American people, who has been credibly accused of sexual assaults, who has been credibly accused of various other uh, uh, um, um, things that wrong things, including perjury. This has got to be thoroughly investigated. I hope the Senate will do so. If he is on the Supreme Court uh, and and the Senate hasn't investigated, then I, then the House will have to. You'll investigate. We would have to investigate any credible allegations, certainly of perjury and other things that haven't been properly looked into before. Congressman, do you agree? I do. I hope it doesn't come to that, though, Anna. I hope that the Senate does its job and does not send to the Supreme Court a justice who has these lingering questions about his past and what he did uh, to women. If, if they answer these questions and a thorough investigation concludes that uh, these allegations are not true, uh, then we should all move on. Uh, but if these questions are not answered because the president limited the investigation, well, we're not helpless in the House to just have a Supreme Court with a justice who has all of these allegations still circling around him. We want the highest court in the land to have the highest integrity uh, in the land. But again, hopefully it doesn't come to this. Hopefully a complete investigation is done and we will find out uh, on Friday. I mean, if it were to come to that, though, wouldn't that open yourselves up to people saying you're just crying over spilled milk? Well, again, we, we don't want to do that, and we should be very careful. Again, so first things first, let's hope the Senate does their job, but tell the American people we're not helpless uh, if they don't. Okay, let me move on, because aside from the political aftermath of these hearings, there has been an emotional aftermath as well. I want to read part of an op-ed that was posted on CNN.com, and the writer, Jennifer Taub, says she is a survivor of sexual assault and she writes that while listening to Dr. Ford's testimony this week quote I felt incredibly guilty for not reporting him referring to her own attacker I blamed myself again I keep thinking this week about Congressman Eric Swalwell's response to President Donald Trump's criticism of Christine Blasey Ford the congressman tweeted it's not her fault it's not her fault it's not her fault on and on and on and she goes on to write reading that tweet I began to cry because it was then that I really understood for the first time that what happened to me was not my fault congressman what's your reaction to that oh Anna that it's emotional to hear professor Taub uh, in that letter I, I spoke uh, I chatted with professor Taub uh, after that was posted and uh, she and I both told each other uh, that we've since heard of others uh, coming to us about uh, their own personal stories. And if anything comes out of uh, the courage that Dr. Uh, Ford has shown, I, I hope that uh, more survivors uh, feel that they can uh, come forward, that they can speak out, and that they will be uh, respected. Uh, and you know, I, I hope that's the future of this, is a better awareness of the American people about sexual assault uh, in this country. Uh, and that women uh, should be believed. Absolutely. Congressman Eric Swalwell, good to have you with us. Thank you.